Here we have the first grade math reps, here to pump you up. So it's a pretty simple, basic layout. What you're going to want to do is in the beginning of the school year, introduce this to your students. In the center here, we have the daily number. Now in the beginning, you're going to want to use numbers through 10. And as you see here, we have a 10 frame. We have your fingers, tally marks, a simple addition fact, tens, a number line, and number bonds. You're going to want to do this paper together for approximately a week until the students become familiar with the board and what they're to do. After students have become familiar with this and are confident in this, you'll want to move to the game board option. The first two or three days, however, you're just going to want to use this blank game board. This will allow students to understand how the game board works and how to move. Many first graders have trouble moving on. They'll often count the first square as one. We want to show them how to hop and move. And you'll notice that there only goes to one, two, and three. So using a pencil and a paper clip, put those in the center and spin. This also allows you to use ordinal numbers. Once the students are comfortable with the blank game board, you can move on to the actual game board. So this is show me the number one. So you'll notice that in each square it has a function of what the student is to do. The teacher will play against the students for approximately a day, modeling proper behavior, making the predictable mistakes, and allowing students to see and encourage them to correct one another in appropriate ways. After approximately a day when the teacher versus the students occurs, the teacher will want to model a fishbowl. This is where two students, or possibly two groups of students, come up into the front of the class and they play the game against each other. This allows the teacher to again point out proper behaviors and expected norms that the class will have. After this, they're on their own. So what you'll want to do to set up is in a plastic sleeve you'll want to put this on one side and I like to put an example, so here's um, an example. I like to put this on the second side so that in case the student forgets what to do, they can simply flip over their plastic sleeve that they're writing on and get a quick example of what they're to do. And as for the game board, make sure to laminate that. Or you can also put this in the sleeve too. If for those early finishing students, you can always have them go back and get another number and begin the process all over again. While having this inside a plastic sleeve, this will allow the students who have already done the 10 frame to erase and do it again. It will allow them to do the tally marks more than once as well. For more advanced features, we have the show me the numbers 2, or actually 1.5, excuse me. This is a little bit later on in the year where the students will use numbers up to 40. You'll see that we have the number bonds still here. We've added greater than, less than. We have our tens, or excuse me, our hundreds. We still have our number line. We have our tens frame, now we have four of them. The number of the day will go in the middle here, so this will give them practice with ten less, ten more, one less, and one more. And then we have our fact families here as well. The game is played the same way. You have a show me the numbers 1.5, using the different icons here with the second paper. And again, the setup would be to have this in a plastic sleeve on one side. I recommend putting an example on the back for students to refer to. And then still using the spinner here in the middle with a pencil and paper clip. We hope you enjoy this and there will be more to come, so stay tuned.